Another hypothesis. What's that? A hypothesis is what you think might be the answer to a question. In this case, why ostriches put their heads in the sand. They might do it because they're scared, but there might be another reason. Well, my hypothesis is that they do it to hide from predators, from animals that want to eat them. But that leaves their whole body sticking out unprotected. Yeah, and if its head is in the ground, it won't be able to see a predator coming. Well, that might make them pretty silly, but you never know. So let's go find out why ostriches bury their heads in the sand. Let's find out what those ostriches are doing. Come on! Shh, we don't want them to run away. Right, and I have just the thing to help us get really close to them. Huh? <gasps> They're not real. I made them. They're hollow inside, so they're easy to carry. We can hide behind them and get closer to the ostriches. Wow, everybody, wow. Hurry up. Shh. Shh. Quiet, everybody. There they are. Shh. Oh, hey. oh, my gosh. Ah. Ah. Come on. Let's try to get closer. Wow. They're even bigger close up. You know, we haven't seen any ostriches stick their head in the sand yet. Wait, I think that one is. But there haven't been any loud noises, and there aren't any predators around here. Those were two of the things we thought. So maybe that's not it. But it could still be hot. Or itchy. Look, there goes another one. Holding its head in the sand. Is it? I can't see what it's doing. I think we should try to get closer. <gasps> Ginormous eggs! <gasps> the eggs! Wow! Ooh. Those are definitely the biggest eggs in the world. That must be its nest. Look, it's turning the eggs with its beak. That's why it keeps lowering its head. They're not sticking their heads in the sand at all. They're sticking their heads in their nests. Which are a hole in the ground. We figured it out. Their necks are so long and their heads are so small that when they bend down, it just looks like they're sticking their head in the sand. And now we know because we investigated for ourselves. And now I know something about ostriches. We all do. Nash, watch uh. out. Whoa! Nash! Shh! Ostriches! <laughs> Uh-oh! It's a little tippy. I need to work on that. Maybe if I just readjust the gimbal... She could be at that all day. The robot tripod is really cool, but it sort of doesn't work. Yet! It doesn't work yet! Whoa! We've got our cameras, so let's go use them. A heliconia plant. Their flowers look like little lobster claws. Ooh, a hummingbird. Whoa! Oof! <laughs> Hummingbirds use their long, pointy beaks to get to the nectar in those long, pointy flowers. Only the right hummingbird can do that. I wonder which hummingbird is the right hummingbird. Cheese! Whoa! That's a great one, too. Hey, cool shot. Is that a hummingbird? Yeah, we looked it up. It's a green hermit hummingbird. This is great, Willow. Um, what is that animal? It's a sloth. Luckily, it moves really slowly, or else I would have never gotten that picture. That's me and an anteater. They use their long snouts to suck up ants and eat them. Amazing! Cool! Here I am with the poison 
Flying Dart Frog. Poison? No way. Oh, yeah, but don't worry. I didn't touch it. Its skin is where the poison is. That's what protects them from creatures who try to eat them. And this one's Nash. That's a selfie of you taking a selfie. <laughs> yeah. And we've just started looking. That's biodiversity. Lots of different plants and animals living in one place. <gasps> Robot tripod. <sighs> You're still not working. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> wow. Whoa! <gasps> Whoa! Amazing! What a control panel! I'm sending the Polymobile on an unmanned test flight to check out its systems. Audrey, systems check. Polymobile systems check commencing. Audrey? Who's Audrey? She's the onboard navigation and computer who gives us information about the Polymobile and about the places we'll go to. Audrey, prepare to launch. Preparing to launch. What's going on? Launch Polo Sky! Changing Polo Mobile to Polo Sky. The real world is right through there. Whoa! Whoa! Automatic seat belts. Nice. I'm in the real world. Hey, where did Chester go? Someone's calling us. I wonder who. Chester? Chester? Where are you? Uh, uh. Are you <gasps> in the polo sky? Yes. Now, please bring me back quick. I'm sorry, Chester, but the autopilot is set to fly the polo sky around the world before coming back. But don't worry, you're perfectly safe up there. How's the view? Actually, it's incredible. I see trees, lots of trees, millions of them. I wonder where he is. Audrey, what are we seeing? We are currently flying over the Amazon rainforest. I know about rainforests. They're wet and have all kinds of plants and animals. Rainforests are so big, they're called a biome. That's a place that's just right for certain plants and animals to live. Really? Like what? Well, like spider monkeys, iguanas, toucans, sloths. Let's go there. Them up! I'm over the ocean now. It's so big. Maybe it's another biome. Cause only certain kinds of animals live in there like fish, corals, and whales. It's different now. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. It's hot. I wish I'd brought my hat. Here, yeah. my hat. You brought it in your backpack? Mm-hmm. Wow, thanks, Nash. High five, buddy. Whoa! Oops. Huh? <clears throat> How about I carry that for a bit? <sighs> I'm so hot. Whew. I'm sweaty. I'm hot and sweaty. Oh, I wish I brought some water. Ah! Water! Wawa, Wawa, for everybody. Thanks, Nash. Maybe bringing that backpack wasn't such a bad idea. Actually, it's turning out to be a really great idea. Hey, look! Rhinos? They're still a little far. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks, Nash. Yup. Let's go. Don't forget the backpack. I got it, buddy. I'll help. They're big. One of the biggest land animals. Elephants are the biggest. Rhinos are so big that nothing around here eats them. Uh, what's up with those little birds? It looks like they're pecking at the rhino's backs. 
eating bugs. I think you're right, Nash. The birds are picking bugs off the rhinos and eating them. I've heard of them. They're called oxpeckers. They help the rhinos by keeping them free of bugs. And the rhinos help the oxpeckers by giving them a source of food. No wonder the rhinos let the oxpeckers peck them. They're both getting something they need. Just like Nash helped us out today. Yeah, we never would have made it to see the rhinos without Nash and his backpack. And Nash would have never made it here with his backpack without everyone helping to carry it. I wonder what else he's got in there. <laughs> Whoa! Stuff! Teddy, bouncy ball, helmet, socks, book, flippers. My stuff! <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we better help Nash get all of his stuff back into his backpack and get it all the way back to the polo mobile. Right. Another hot, sweaty, thirsty hike to... Right over there. We barely left the polo mobile. Oh, you're <laughs> right. <laughs> <gasps> that monkey has a really long tail. Yeah, long enough to hold onto branches with them and hang down. I think they're spider monkeys. They have prehensile tails, which means they can use them to grab onto things. Their arms and legs are so long and skinny that when they spread out, they look kind of spidery. Guess that's how they got their name. Wait, are those monkeys hugging? I think it's how they say hello. I like that about them. Hugs are good. <clears throat> look at that. Whoa. Whoa, amazing. Did you see? See that? I can't believe he made it. Whoa! Hey, that monkey's throwing fruit at us. Oh! oh. Aha! Mm. Ah. Ah. Uh. Back inside the polo mobile. Come on! Phew! <gasps> I don't think they want us here. It's their home, and they don't like unwanted visitors. Uh. Uh. Maybe that's why they live so high up in the trees. More room to swing. I read that they stay up in the trees to avoid predators on the ground. Instead, they do those amazing leaps from tree to tree. Well, we don't live in trees, so we better figure out a way to get down. Whoa! Oof. Whoa! 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 We've got to get out of this tree now. I've been thinking about that. We'll swing like spider monkeys. Yes! Polos, ready your climbing ropes. Here we go! Nail the landing. Lucky! Oh! <laughs> Anything? Weddy? Nope, not yet. <sighs> Anything? How long does it take before something happens? Well, depending on the type of butterfly, it could take one to three weeks. Aw, man! Plus, we don't know how long this butterfly has been a pupa. And even if we did, it's not exact. It can take a little bit more or a little bit less. So we just have to wait and see. Right. <sighs> hey, I know this place. It's where we found the pupa. 
And I think today may be the day. It's happening! Really? I think so. Look! Wow! wow. The butterfly is going to come out of the pupa and open its wings. And we're all going to be here to see it. Let's celebrate! Have a party! Papa party! Papa party! kind of butterfly it's gonna be. Maybe it will be a morpho. Big and blue. Or maybe a swallowtail. Whatever kind of butterfly it is, I'm sure it will be beautiful. <coughs> huh? That's not a butterfly. Not even close. It's a beetle. Turns out our pupa is a green tiger beetle. Beetles have pupas? All insects do. Butterflies? Moths, flies, mosquitoes, and of course, beetles. I guess I just thought it was a butterfly because of all the other butterflies around here. Sorry. Don't be. We got to see a metamorphosis. And it was amazing. <laughs> Let's take our pupa party outside and let this little beetle go home. Go ahead, little beetle. Thanks for letting us see your pupil stage. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>